this is Bat Mike. And on today's episode, we are gonna cover financial topics for SAP Business One. You may have noticed something different. I shaved. And since it's Halloween 2020, I thought I would pull out all the stops for this video. <laughs> Back to business. <clears throat> oh, I had a frog in my throat there. Hey guys, it's Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. And on today's video, we are going to cover financial topics for SAP Business One to help you understand SAP's GL account determinations, chart of accounts, accounts, and give you a quick accounting 100 level understanding of basics so that you will be a better consultant. I've had questions from many consultants saying they weren't very comfortable in the accounting principles of SAP Business One and they wanted to be more comfortable. So I thought I would do a video on that. I don't always wear a cape, but sometimes I do, especially for Halloween. Thought I would have some fun this year. Check out www.battleshipcobra.com for more information about me, mainly my crystal reports for SAP Business One and my SQL for SAP Business One courses. They're linked there and in the description below. I do videos Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time weekly. So check those out, like, subscribe, and click the bell to join the notification squad if you wanna see more videos on SAP Business One or just for me in general. I try to have fun with it and cover technical topics, all of the different topics of SAP Business One and anything that I find interesting. So I'm gonna to attempt to do this whole video in costume. Why not? Let's get started. Do, 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 do. My background is in business and technology. So a lot of these topics were just second nature to me. I didn't really understand that a lot of consultants don't necessarily have the accounting background I am not a certified accountant, but I know enough to talk about debits and credits and some basics. So that is my goal for these videos. There's gonna be three videos and each one will cover a little bit more building on the one before it. So today we're gonna to start and we're gonna build on the foundations of accounting and we're gonna get you familiar with the transactions and some of the terms used in accounting. So we're gonna cover debits and credits, accounts, ledgers, the chart of accounts, and journal entries. So first, debits and credits is the foundation of your double entry system. The purpose of a double entry system is whenever you do a single transaction, it has to affect at least two accounts. The point of this is to have a solid ledger record of where things are going to go. You're not just putting that balances in one place. You always have to have a place to offset that account. So the money has a trail through the ledgers and you can always track it. So it's, it acts as a cross check of what's going on keeps everybody honest. It's hard to hide things in a double entry system. You can't just make balances disappear. That's why sometimes a logistical person will be like, can't we just get rid of that inventory? And I say, well, I can do some stuff, but I can't just wipe it out in certain situations. Um, so in all journal entries, your total debits must match your total credits. And this will make sense later, but your whole ledger balances. So the whole system, the whole thing, it's designed to track and control all the money so that you can honestly account for things and it reduces the amount of like messing around in the ledger. People can still mess around, but the double entry system is the basis. Debits and credits are just the different sides of the ledger. The entire company has all debits and all credits must equal each other at the end of the day. So for an account, all must equal each other, etc. okay? Accounts. So each account is basically just a division within that ledger. Within the general ledger, you're gonna break accounts down. You're gonna store your different transactions in a meaningful way with meaningful categories and a meaningful structure that has general rules, but it's defined ultimately by the business. Let's take a look. So we pop into our SAP Business One system, modules, financials, chart of accounts. So you can see the general structure as assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, cogs, expenses. 
Those are set up in a basic way, and there's a, there's a few more rules within that, but that is kind of the high-level ways that all businesses make a scorecard that they can all report in a fundamentally standardized way. I'll explain more about financial reports later, but basically you have assets, liabilities, and equity. That's your balance sheet accounts, and that is like the body of the business. And then you have revenue, cogs, and expenses, and that's the actions of the business, fundamentally, okay? This is just a basic way to think about it. So um, I'll go into much more detail about those later. General ledger, or a ledger, it used to be on paper. It was just a piece of paper. It has debits and credits, that's it. And then when you're gonna do a transaction, you just write the difference between those two things. So it is like a log file, it has a running total, and that says what the balance of that particular account is. It just records transactions. So if you look at my example here of a bank account, you have, you know, October 1st, incoming payment, $1,000. Debit increases it. I'll explain a little bit more about what does what in the next, uh, in the next video. October 5th, you have another incoming payment. In October 5th, then you have a $500 payment out. October 10th, you have another incoming payment, and October 15th, you have another incoming payment. So you can see this running total ledger. This running total ledger is keeping track of the balance of this account. So let's take a look at that. So we're back to our chart of accounts here. I'm just gonna go to assets, look at accounts receivable CAD, and just pop open one of these ledgers. Put, click the golden arrow there. You can filter this ledger, and this basically is a running total of all the stuff for this particular accounts receivable account. You have all sorts of things that affect this, and you can see this running balance here, and that is a cumulative total that will give you your balance of your ledger. And again, all the debits add up, and all the credits will add up, and then that is the same for every account and your whole general ledger. The general ledger, you could say, is the full thing, and then each account is a broken down ledger. So you're taking all those transactions, classifying them in a meaningful way, and then affecting them with debits and credits. Some accounts have subledgers, and that would be like our accounts receivable. So they're also called control accounts. So a subledger actually has its totals broken down and grouped by the customer. So this is gonna get a little bit more complicated, but accounts receivable and accounts payable, they're always going to have their own individual accounts. So your accounts receivable is $1,000, but then within the accounts receivable, you're going to have individual balances of all those customers within those accounts. So when you write to accounts receivable, you're going to say which subledger, i.e. which customer you are writing that data to. You cannot write directly to accounts receivable just the general account because you have to define which subledger i.e. which customer or with accounts payable, which vendor you're affecting in that subledger. Inventory in SAP Business One is not in theory a control account, but it should be. And most people treat it like a control account because they want at the end of a, of a period to be able to say, my inventory total is a million dollars, but they want to be able to break it out into the subledger, treating those subledgers as individual item codes. So those individual item codes are shown on the inventory audit report, and those should add up to the inventory total on the balance sheet. And this is a fundamental issue with SAP Business One because we can't turn inventory accounts into control accounts. And some people end up manually journalizing the inventory account, and that throws the balances out because there's the balance that SAP sees in the inventory accounts, and then there's the balance from the transactions of the inventory, and those should match. But if you have accounts receivable and accounts payable, they have to match. There's no way to get it out. There's no possible way to have that not uh, work out in SAP. It just has to be that way. So we'll show you an example of that. So we're gonna use an accounts receivable account again. Click the golden arrow, and you'll be able to see here that each one of these transactions, while it's written to 1021000 accounts receivable, it's also writing to the sub-ledgers of this account. So this is the lowest level of the transaction. And you can journalize with a regular journal entry directly to a sub-ledger if you want. That's a more advanced topic. 
But just so you understand, there's accounts, ledgers, and some accounts have subledgers, and it's usually only accounts receivable, accounts payable, and then inventory with the inventory audit report. And that's why people want to take the aging and match it to a balance sheet all the time. Accountants want that to happen. Chart of accounts. So as we kind of mentioned, the chart of accounts organizes accounts into meaningful drawers or categories, assets, liabilities, equity, COGS, revenue, and expenses. You can do more or less. There's more than that, but those are the basic ones and you're not gonna go wrong by understanding what those are. I'm gonna talk more about those and those classifications in the next video. The general structure is defined kind of by gap and then there's some, you know, accounting standards, current assets, current liabilities, long-term, blah, blah, blah. You don't really need to know those things. Just know that each of those classes of accounts has kind of a meaning behind it and there's a reason why each one of those accounts is broken out into those. Sometimes you're gonna have way more accounts in your chart of accounts because there's a, there's a requirement or some, uh, some need for the accountants to break it out or they wanna see all these different classifications. You can't just go, you know, miscellaneous assets, miscellaneous liabilities, miscellaneous revenue, miscellaneous expenses. There needs to be some logic behind the, the decision-making or the reporting requirements so that you have a breakout of your different classifications. Again, the debits and the credits must equal everything across all accounts, and here is an example. So zing, we're back to our chart of accounts, assets. So you're gonna see assets, cash and cash deposits, current assets, current assets are technically able to turn uh, into liquid assets within a year, and then long-term assets are technically more than a year. So anything that's within current assets, technically you could liquidate within a year. So this is like a, a pretty standard rule. Accounts receivable, most of the time, you're gonna be within net 365. Inventory, you could potentially sell or liquidate. Prepaids, cash and deposits are already liquid, right? Long-term things, tangible and intangible assets, things that it might, uh, you're not gonna turn them into cash within a year, okay? So that's a basic rule. You don't really need to know that, but just so you can see, there's some logic behind it. And these are all broken down into specific, uh, you know, specific pieces of information, and that is that. So we have our sales, revenue, so we've broken it down into the classifications. This makes it easier for us to understand where the revenue is coming from. When we do the P&L, it's broken out into meaningful groups. So I can go income, sales revenue, and just one sales revenue account, but then I wouldn't necessarily know what class of stuff I'm selling or services I'm rendering will uh, are making me money. So we're fundamentally using the revenues, to, you know, top level, the cost of goods sold is a direct cost for selling and then expenses are your organization. And I'll talk about that again in the next video. Journal entries. Journal entries are what record the transactions in the system. So now that you know you have accounts, you affect accounts, they have subledgers. The subledgers need to be debit and credit and you need at least two different accounts and equal debits and credits. So you have, based on the double entry system, it records a transaction, it's just one entry. It can be more than two accounts, but it has to be minimum two because they're minimum double. Double doesn't mean it always has to only be two, it just has to be at least two, and then you can affect a bunch of accounts in one compound transaction. Again, I'm gonna beat this into your mind. Debits must equal credits and quick example. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go modules, financials, journal entry, click the last one. This one's not very exciting, but you can see it's the Bank of Canada to a vendor subledger. So in this case, we're paying a bank, we're paying with a check or a bank wire to a vendor. And you can see there's a debit and a credit. They balance, you can see at the bottom. This one, in this case, it has a control account for the vendor. There's no control account for the bank account because it's just a regular account. Now you can go and do your own journal entries and you can make any two accounts you want as long as you follow those rules, the debits equals the credits, and you have two accounts at least, and then you have to pick a date, and that records the entry into the subledger, and subledger makes the total of the accounts, the totals of the accounts roll up into the financial accounts. Next video, we're gonna dive into more transactions and more on debits and credits with the foundations of financial accounting. I hope you like this video. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra, I make weekly videos at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays. Like, subscribe, 
and click that bell to be part of the notification squad. If you don't come to YouTube all the time, it will email you whenever I make a video. Check out www.battleshipcobra.com for my SAP Business One courses. I really appreciate you guys watching. Bye for now.